Hi, everybody. My name is Heather Cassiola, and I am a board member for the Arizona branch of the International Dyslexia Association. And I am honored and privileged to introduce our guest tonight. And that is Maggie Velasquez. Maggie is from the Arizona Department of Education. She is the Dyslexia and Literacy Intervention Specialist. And she's here tonight to speak with us about the dyslexia legislation and where we are as a state. My name is Maggie Velasquez. I am the Dyslexia and Literacy Intervention Specialist. I'm part of um, the ELA team for the Arizona Department of Education. I love my job and I love our team. We have Dr. Amy Boza, who is our um, director. She's the director of English Language Arts and Move On When Reading. We have Sarah Bondi. She's in the K3 Literacy Specialist. So she's in like the Move On When Reading space, which we're going to discuss a little bit about. Uh, we also have Lauren Spinsley, who is our secondary ELA specialist. We have Michelle Rutten, who is our literacy coach coordinator. Um, it's really exciting right now for Arizona. We have about 25 coaches that um, have been hired through ADE, and they are working alongside um, districts this year, and she is kind of running that show. Um, we have Karen Tenaple, who is our K-5 literacy and dyslexia specialist, and we have Kim Perenio who is a K-5 literacy and dyslexia specialist, who's actually um, on our meeting tonight. So we are seven, we are the ELA team, we're part of the bigger team of the academic standards, that's um, science, social studies, math, charter, so forth. Um, but we're a part of the bigger team. So uh, we all are working, we're in conjunction with the standards and with helping to educate the students. So I always like to start with the mission and vision of the ELA team. It's important to know that we're here to support teachers, students, parents, administrators, whoever needs the support, we're here for them. Um, we are all very passionate about ELA and um, reading. So um, I like to start with it because it, the mission really drives what we do. Uh, the mission of the ADE ELA team is to educate, empower, and elevate the expertise of educators and leaders in evidence-based literacy pedagogy and practices so all students in Arizona can learn to read and write proficiently. And then our vision is why we do what we do. It's kind of our belief. The ADE ELA team envisions every student has access to knowledgeable educators and leaders trained and confident in the best literacy practices aligned with the science of reading. So that's who we are. That's why we're here. And ultimately, we're here for every student, every child um, in the state of Arizona. And I always like to say, when I started working for ADE, um, it's it's so nice that I have the potential, the opportunity to reach every student in Arizona uh, through their educators, through their administrators, through their parents. Um, so I'm very grateful for the um, position that I've been given. So here are our learning intentions. Um, so we are going to review national and state level literacy data. That's the why. Why do we need to have dyslexia legislation, right? Um, we're going to also look at move on when reading legislation because we can't discuss dyslexia legislation without understanding the move on when reading legislation. And then we are going to summarize additional dyslexia requirements and um, those that are related to the universal literacy and dyslexia screeners. The K3 legislation, we need to think about who it affects. What educators does it affect? What student population does it affect? Um, and really, the, the, it affects all K-3 schools and um, teachers and administrators. Administrators need to create the structures for a multi-tiered system of supports, or MTSS. And um, they need to ensure all students are receiving the instructional minutes of core, which is tier one, and or tier two or tier three if needed um, to make it necessary for the students to succeed. Administrators also need to make curriculum decisions that follow move on when reading requirements. 
um, K-3 educators need to follow the MTSS model uh, that's guided by assessment data, which we're going to look at. And the students, um, this legislation affects are the students who struggle in reading as well as their families. This legislation really um, impacts the families as well. Um, and you can see there's numerous stakeholders. So we're going to begin by looking at data, as I mentioned. So this is um, the national level with Arizona's NAEP scores. Um, you, you may already know NAEP is a National Assessment of Educational Progress. And it's an assessment given to fourth through eighth grade uh, students in both reading and math. The test is administered both nationally and internationally. And then the NAEP data allows us to help make comparisons between states and nations. As you can see, um, Arizona has trended positively in fourth grade reading over the past decade, which actually correlates to when uh, Move On When Reading first started. Um, so we can kind of put those two together that it is working. And then um, Arizona's made progress in closing the gap between its scores and the national average. Now, while we're making progress, we still need to remember only 31% of Arizona students tested as proficient or above in NAEP, um, on NAEP of 2019. So drilling it down from the national to the state level, Arizona students are also trending on the right direction of third grade English language arts exam. Um, you can see since 2015, the percentage of students who have passed the statewide exam has grown from 40 to 46% in 2019. Um, and then of course, COVID came. So we're, we're seeing how um, the effects from that has, has happened and we are, I think everybody in education, parents, we're all trying diligently to recover um, the learning that may have been missed. Uh, and then this slide just reinforces that Arizona is showing consistent growth in third grade reading since the beginning of the new statewide exam and the move on when reading legislation. And again, I, I didn't put in um, 2021 because COVID hit and it it really did hurt our students and our, our educators. So then if we look at um, the Arizona counties data, pre-pandemic, we were seeing pos positive growth. So as we move from the national to the state level, it's important to also look at student achievement in specific counties. The positive news is that the percentage of all third graders passing the statewide exam increased from 2015 to 2019 in every county in Arizona. That's amazing. Um, so while we still have work to do, we are finding success in every corner of our state. So that, sh that should be celebrated. So the legislative story. So why do we have the legislation? Legislation supports the focus and use of science of reading to guide classroom decisions. States like Mississippi have shown the impact it makes for students in learning and reading. Science of reading also increases the understanding of how the brain learns to read and the process of language. The K-3 legislation is to do better for our students. Um, so early intervention can take place to fill the learning gaps. We don't want to wait until they're in third grade to start filling those gaps. We need to start sooner. So that's the purpose of the legislation. So move on when reading. It's Arizona's K-3 reading initiative. And one of the main reasons Arizona's positive trend data has been um, because of the advent of its K-3 reading legislation, which is the Move On When Reading, or MAUR for short. Arizona's K-3 reading legislation is called MAUR, Move On When Reading. The MAUR legislation is designed to promote early identification and targeted intervention for struggling readers so that they are reading at grade level 
on or before the end of third grade. So at its core, the legislation is about identifying and meeting the needs of our youngest students so they will become lifelong readers. So we're gonna review each part of the law and how it relates to MAUR legislation and you'll see how this relates to the dyslexia legislation also. So the first law we're gonna look at is ARS 15-701 which, which primarily deals with promotion and retention. Um, the stat, this statute, defines the criteria of third grade third graders who do not demonstrate reading proficiency on the statewide assessment and also has four exemptions for retention. Uh, this law also requires evidence-based interventions. All students must be screened in reading and parent notifications of Mauer and be informed of their, if their child is at risk of not meeting future reading achievement. So they need to know the parents need to know early on if their child is at risk and not wait again, like I've been saying. Okay, the next one is ARS 15-704. And this one is kind of the CAA one, which is curriculum instruction and assessment and parent notification again. Um, first, we'll focus on instruction and curriculum that is a part of this legislation. Um, 15-704 ensures that each K-3 district or charter will adopt an evidence-based reading curriculum that includes the essential components of reading instruction, identifies indicators for intervention, ongoing curriculum review, K-3 schools must provide ongoing teacher training on evidence-based reading research. So um, teacher training is crucial to filling the gaps. Um, and then devote reasonable amounts of time to explicit evidence-based core reading instruction and intensive evidence-based reading instruction until students meet proficiency on the reading standards. So it continues, this one's a, a heavy one. Um, and this is where legislation weaves literacy expectations with dyslexia screening expectations to create an overlap or a connection to get the information we need in one assessment setting without impacting students much. Um, schools must select and administer a universe, universal literacy and dyslexia screener for all students. They were already having to do a universal literacy screener. Um, now legislation has required universal literacy and dyslexia screening measures for kindergarten through first grade students. Um, this also must take place within the first 45 days of school or within the first 45 days uh, after enrollment incurs. So when you have your new students come in, you gotta screen them basically. Every student in grade kindergarten and first in a public school in Arizona must be screened for indicators consistent with dyslexia. Second through third grade will continue to be screened with the universal literacy screener per the Maori requirements. And then each school district or charter school that provides instruction in kindergarten programs and grades one um, through three shall select and administer screening and ongoing diagnostic and classroom-based instructional reading assessments. Um, and then it provides guidance for parent notifications of students who are identified as having indicators consistent with dyslexia based on screener results. So the next one is ARS 15-211. And this law has made requirements for core and intervention programs. Um, state dyslexia specialists, which is myself, if it wasn't for this, I would not have this position. Um, training for at least one K through three third grade teacher. Um, and we'll get into that in a little bit. And then a literacy plan submissions, which is the Mauer. And then it also provides funding, budgeting, and a requirement for a state literacy report. So now we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes, the dyslexia legislation. Um, this isn't totally separate from Move On When Reading. It works in conjunction, in conjunction with Move On When Reading. And I think that's important if we can get that message out there. So educators and administrators don't feel like it's one more thing they're having to do. It's really working together to better service our students. 
So the legislation, I think it's good to look at a timeline of the legislation to see when it started and to see where we're at. Um, some of you may not have known that it really started back in 2017 with defining and developing a dyslexia handbook. And then we moved on to 2019 with Senate Bill 1318, um, which was passed for K-1 students to be screened for characteristics consistent with dyslexia. So th that bill was in 2019. And just so you can think about the magnitude of um, what we're doing, we are barely fully implementing that this school year. So it, it, while it's been in legislation for a few years, it takes time to get everything ready to make those types of, of movements. Um, so I think that's also important to point out. Um, and then um, in July of 2021, all schools must have at least one teacher who has completed the approved dyslexia training on each campus. Well, that didn't quite happen the way we had hoped either. So we have more of a timeline. Um, the legislation was extended to fully implement by July 1st, 2022 with a universal literacy and dyslexia screener and having one teacher as a dyslexia training designee. It takes time to um, review the trainings, which um, we'll kind of talk about and it takes time for the teachers to complete the trainings. We didn't want it to be a check, we're done. We wanted, the purpose of the legislation is to um, help educate the educators in um, struggling readers. So if it's just doing a check, we're done, we're not doing our service to the legislation as it's intended. So the universal liter literacy screener, as I've mentioned, is not new. It was part of Move On When Reading legislation. Um, it was updated to add screening for characteristics consistent with dyslexia. And um, ADE will also develop a dyslexia, or we have, I guess, we have de um, developed a dyslexia screening plan that meets requirements. There were certain requirements that must be included in the dyslexia screening plan, such as all K through first grade students be screened within the first 45 days. Um, and then you can see the A through E phonological and phonemic awareness, rapid naming skills, correspondence between sounds and, and letters, nonsense word fluency, and sound symbol recognition. So we had to make sure that all of those measures were a part of the screener. Um, but the key, which is what I've been saying is, the dyslexia screener can be integrated with a reading proficiency screener or our universal um, literacy screener before. So <clears throat> thankfully, um, because we already had the legislation for move on when reading um, related to the universal literacy screening, um, you will see that Maurer called for screening of students for literacy struggles and met many of their requirements um, including the dyslexia screening legislation. So both programs called for screenings for issues with phonological and phonemic awareness and letter sound correspondence. The two key additions found in the dyslexia screening legislation was rapid naming skills and nonsense word fluency. Originally, they had it as nonsense word uh, repetition, but it has changed to nonsense word fluency which is what we already had uh, for the move on when reading, um, but initially it was different. So um, it's, it's nice to see these two side by side pictures because you can see it's not adding a whole lot extra onto students or educators. And that was the goal was the students didn't have to sit down at multiple tests to get the same um, results. We we were really wanting them to be able to take one assessment and maybe extend it by adding one or two more things um, to, uh, you know, we don't want to overtest the students. So I think this is important. And then um, part of the, re the legislation also requires guidance to support the implementation and use of the universal literacy and dyslexia screener. So we're not just saying here, schools, 
you guys have to do this, we're done. Um, we have a guidance document. It's called, and this is actually where the list is now. We used to have just the list and then we had the guidance, but we had the list and the guidance. So we thought let's get rid of the list so we can have our educators trained in using that document a little bit more when they're looking at the list um, because there's a lot of good um, pieces of information in there. And um, the guide was created and published with support from various groups, including ADE's unique populations, um, ADE's exceptional student services team, and um, it is it has the encompassed list um, in it. So I highly recommend if you have never seen the guidance document that you look at it, and um, we do update it. Um, periodically I was going to say every year but I, I usually update it more than once a year um, and as vendors are being added to the list then I definitely will update the list um, and you can see from the table of contents that it covers the key points that's intended by the law to make certain that it meets the needs of teachers families and more importantly students so when vendors um, wanted to get on the list. Sorry, here we go. <laughs> so here's the list of screeners. And in order for them to meet the criteria, they had to go through an RFI process, which is a request for information. And they had to make sure that they had the efficacy studies to support that their um, universal literacy and dyslexia screener um, works. Uh, and it, as you can see on the list, we have videos. So if you are interested in learning about um, one of the screeners or if you're thinking about changing your screener, you can watch the video and see if there's something um, that maybe works better for, for who you have. Um, this list started in February 2021 and um, we have just recently republished this to add yet one more. <laughs> so the, the list grew to 10 approved tools and it will continue to grow each year as vendors continue to share their products that meet the criteria of the law. Um, and we are happy to offer as many products as we can because we don't want schools to feel like they don't have the choices that they like, but they do have to meet the criteria, the, the vendors do have to meet the criteria. So that's important to know also. So dyslexia training designee, this is kind of my baby. Um, every campus with K-3 students must have a teacher trained in dyslexia. So what that means is this person will be the dyslexia training designee and they will need to complete three components of training, reading instruction, intensifying instruction, and understanding and recognizing dyslexia. The DDT will serve as a resource to other teachers or students, um, but it does not diagnose. And I probably should have said that on, when we were discussing the uh, dyslexia, uh, the universal literacy and dyslexia screener, that does not diagnose dyslexia. Um, it just gives indicators for students that have um, indicators consistent with dyslexia. So we can start intervening earlier rather than waiting until we're seeing it in third grade. So this teacher will not be diagnosing, um, but they will serve as the resource as I mentioned. And um, while the legislation only calls for one, we do, uh, the Department of Education does, um, hope that as many teachers as possible can um, receive the training. These trainings also went through the RFI process and um, this one was a very heavy lift. Um, we had to check each part of their program, of their training to make sure that it met legislative requirements based off the RFI. So um, some programs chose not to submit to the RFI um, and some programs submitted and they didn't they they didn't have all the the elements needed so they weren't approved for the list um, but vendors can apply for it it's 
you know, sometimes they need to get a little um, heat from their constituents. So that would be the educators that are using their programs that want them to be on the list. So you can certainly ask if your vendor's not on the list, ask them to um, apply. Um, and then this just supports ongoing professional development as that's always been a move on when reading K3 legislative requirement. So this has helped because now we have more specific guidelines based on the RFI, as I had mentioned, on what the training needs to look like for at least one teacher or more. Um, and then it can help guide what evidence-based training can look like for all teachers. Um, and, and then the list of trainings can just kind of give leaders a guide for what's out there and what's good. So just, you know, if you have a teacher who isn't necessarily the DDT but needs some training, the list is a good place to start. So here's part of the list. Um, and you can see that there are, if you look at the, the top, you see the vendor, the title of the trainings, and then you see I, which is reading instruction, and then II, which is intensifying instruction, and then URD, which is understanding and recognizing dyslexia. And then you'll see the little Xs for each um, vendor of what they qualify for. So you can choose um, to take different vendors, or if you find one vendor that offers all three and you like that vendor, it's whatever works best for is, um, the person taking the training. We, we can't recommend any of them, but I will say, because they've all been through the rigorous RFI, um, they are all very good programs, uh, training, sorry. And um, anyone that someone takes will get very good training out of it. Um, and we are adding to the list um, every year. So as we get more submissions, we will review it and um, hopefully add more. We do have a couple of um, colleges on there too. So you can get college credit if you would like. So that's kind of exciting also. And then here's the dyslexia handbook. I always like to talk about this because it's important to know where a good resource is. Um, the dyslexia handbook has guidelines for teachers and parents to identify dyslexia. It's a description of educational strategies that have been shown to improve the academic performance of students with dyslexia. So if you are worried about your child or students in your class, use this as a resource. I have it printed up <laughs> and I have it at work. I have it at home. I have it, I don't, probably more places than I would like to admit. <laughs> Um, but it's also, uh, it has a description of education. Oh, sorry, I said that. Um, it has a description of resources and services that are available for students with dyslexia and to teachers um, and parents with students with dyslexia. So this is, um, and then again, this was a team of people. It wasn't just one person. There was actually quite a bit of people who helped create this uh, dyslexia handbook. I was not one of them because I was not part of the department yet. Um, but we are uh, hoping to update it within the next year or two uh, and just add more information as more research is being conducted. So if you want to find the handbook, you can go on um, Arizona's dyslexia page and there's the link and it's under dyslexia resource guides. If you have not been to this website, I highly recommend that you um, go and look at it. There's a lot of information on there and um, it, it hopefully has a lot of um, tools to help parents, families, even students. I, I get numerous calls from families that are wanting help with um, a dyslexia diagnosis or with their child that they think has dyslexia. Um, and I really love that I can still kind of have that connection with the parents, even at the state level. It's not as much as I would like, you know, being at the, the school level, but I, I get some. <laughs> so um, that's nice. Uh, so make sure you check this out and you can refer people to it as needed. And then the, the last um, 
legislative change I wanted to address is a K-5 literacy endorsement. So this is new legislation and it's all K-5 teachers who provide literacy instruction will need to have this endorsement. So that would be special ed, that would um, be uh, kindergarten through fifth grade teachers, everybody. And then there's um, an assessment that they would have to take. But the good news is, I actually think, well, it says three years to complete, but I think the years are a, a little bit different because for new teachers coming in from t from college, um, I think they have three years. And then ex teachers who are already in the field have a little bit more time. Um, but the endorsement requires six credit hours of training and it's specific to the science of reading and elements of reading. And then another um, six credit hours um, for literacy assessment and kind of literacy interventions. Um, and we actually do have a list that um, we just published last week, I believe. So we have a list of trainings that meet the criteria for the literacy endorsement. There's a section A and a section B. So based on um, what the training is, it, it'll be A or B or A and B. And some of the trainings came from our dyslexia training designee list. So if, I'm gonna just put that. So some of these trainings qualify for the literacy endorsement. So if you're the dyslexia training designee and you've taken one that's on both, then you, you're covered for the coursework. You would just need to take the assessment. Um, so that's kind of the nice thing. We were trying to not add one more thing, again, to the educators. Um, and we were trying to make sure that our the educators are getting what they need out of um, the training. So um, it's 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 pretty exciting, I think, in Arizona right now. And I'm really proud of how far we've come. We looked at the timeline. It seems like it's, you know, 2017 seems like it's been kind of long. Um, but when I go to other state coordinators meetings and I hear where they're at, some states are are not where we are with dyslexia. They're they're a little bit more be behind. And some states, of course, like Oregon and Mississippi are, you know, they, they we have been looking to them, but it's my vision to for other states to come to us and look at our structure and what we have in place for legislation and mimic what we're doing because we're doing some really good things in Arizona and it's a great time uh, to be a part of it. So um, that's all I have for you. Use the hashtag until everyone could read if you want to. Um, do anything on Twitter. And thank you guys. If there's any questions, I can take some questions. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me, Maggie? Yes. Okay, great. It was my headphones. I was having some headphones <laughs> issues. But um, I can you can see the questions too. Do you want to look in the chat? Yes. yes. Or I, I can read them to you. There's one that says the K-5 reading endorsement, we need six hours in the science of reading and elements of reading and six hours of, of assessment. So a total of 12 hours. Yes, and the, the trainings that are um, already on the list, they have, it's, it's 90 hours, 90 um, PD hours. So the trainings on the list have already met that deadline or that, um, requirements, sorry. Those qualifications, right. <laughs> yes. gotcha. The slideshow, I do not believe we're, we're, we're sending the slideshow out. Would you no. like to? Unless you can't do it, Maggie. I, I can send it to you um, as a PDF if you are able to send it to them. I don't know. Well, let me, I'll, I'll talk to our um, administrative assistant to see if she can get that out to everybody. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. We're also going to be recording too. We are recording. So that's going to be posted as well. 
Anybody else have any other questions? Uh, I see where can we find the trainings on the list? I think, did I answer that, Gina? Yeah, she's not. Mm. Okay. Let's see if she, oh, she said she doesn't know where to find them. For which trainings? It looks like the trainings, I'm probably assuming that meet the requirements. For the a, dyslexia training designee or for the, Gina? Or for the K-5 endorsement? And somebody wants to see this, um, Karen. Hi, Karen. Um, she wants to see the, the list or the slide for the approved trainings. For the dyslexia training designee or for the literacy endorsement? The, Which one, Karen? I don't have the literacy endorsement. Okay. I can pull that up if you guys want to see it. That'd be great. Okay. Let me pull it up over here and then I'll move it. <laughs> Okay, so this is the approved list for the DTD. Yes. Okay, so we have a page um, through ADE for the K-5 literacy endorsement. And then you'll come to this blue bar that says approved trainings. Oh, I'm sorry. So it was three semester hours and then 45 clock hours. That slide was done like last year when it was first coming out. So I think some things had changed. <laughs> so it's 90 hours total is what you'll need or six hours total. And then all of these trainings will, um, will cover it. Okay, hopefully that answers. Let's see if we have any other questions here. I'll put this link in the chat. Somebody's asking about the specialized instruction using a science-based program. Is there a required amount of specialized instruction using a science-based program the school needs to provide to students who fail the dyslexia screener? Awesome question, Barbara. Um, We have recommendations for tier two and tier three. For example, tier three, um, 45 minutes a day, five days a week. Tier two is 30 minutes a day, um, three days a week. So we have recommendations, but we don't have um, a required amount of time for the instruction. But as we know, dyslexia and students with dyslexia, they need more time with the instruction. So as much time as you can devote to them. And it's important too that that um, whoever's delivering instruction is qualified. Is, is qualified in um, delivering evidence-based instruction. Exactly. Any other questions? Let's see, let's see. They're asking for the list of approved science-based tier three programs. So we don't have approved lists for programs. We have a vetted list for programs um, because an approved list would be an RFI and a vetted list, it's, it's just a little bit different. So if you go to the move on when reading page, oh, actually I should have gone to administrator, sorry. And then you'll see where it says, um, we're looking for intervention, right? So we'll come to the intervention tab and then you scroll down and it says intervention and supplemental reading programs. And then this will show you the list of programs and the um, ESSA evidence values that they have. So the ones in green are in the, um, the top three tiers and then 
it goes down. So if you're not sure about your program, you can look on this list and I can put this in the chat as well. There's a really good question too that I'm curious about. If a teacher has a reading endorsement, do they still need to complete the literacy hours and assessment? No, they do not. If they have a reading endorsement, that trumps the literacy endorsement. Okay. That's a good question. So will that will they get that extra endorsement on the certificate? Or does it matter? Is it just if it's a reading endorsement, you don't have to have the literacy endorsement for K Correct. Correct. Okay. It says, can school psychologists team diagnose dyslexia with IQ tests, working memory, spelling inventory, fluency passage and work samples, or only if parents go out to private neuropsychs? Um, I mean, this is through, <laughs> it's not gonna say dyslexia on the evaluation, but um, that doesn't mean they don't have dyslexia if it's done through the school districts. Am I correct, Maggie? Yes, and we actually we're on the more of the gen ed side, um, so we try and get to it be, before there's a an ESS referral, right. um, and and really you could have dyslexia because it's it's on the spectrum, right? So you could be moderate or severe with dyslexia, and depending on where you're at would depend if you need to get those um, ESS services or not. However, if you do have a diagnosis, I know I'm not really answering this question, but if you do have a diagnosis, it can be part of the IEP evaluation. Um, typically, they don't diagnose dyslexia at the school. They don't say dyslexia, but they're going to have it coded differently right. when you see a, um, a, a disability in reading right. or in fluency or comprehension, then that clues you guys into that's dyslexia. And a lot of times teachers don't know that and they see that on the, the IEP or the evaluation and they don't realize that the student has dyslexia. So we are huge advocates through IDA of getting that word out there and for, yes. for more districts and states to be using that language. Yes. Um, let's see. Um, I'm reading, is the dyslexia training designee required to be a teacher or can other special education professionals hold this ro role? So the dyslexia training designee has to be a teacher who services K-3 students in reading. So if a special education teacher is in K-3 and she works, he or she works in reading, then they can qualify to be the DDT. If they're the fifth through eighth grade or something, then no, they cannot. If it's a special ed director who's not working with the students, they cannot qualify. Do you see that last question, Maggie, about the recommend? Can you repeat the recommendations for your tier two and tier three support? Yes. So tier two is recommended um, by us 30 minutes a day for three three days a week. And then tier three is recommended for 45 minutes a day for five days a week. So if you are on a four day school week, then you're gonna try and get 225 minutes of tier three in a week, just because the students don't come to school, they still deserve that, the instructional minutes for intervention. Did we miss any questions? Let's see. Okay, um, it, I wanna confirm if you have gone through the training to be the dyslexia training designee, you only need to take the foundations of reading assessment. If you have, um, if you have taken one of the, the trainings that's listed on the K-5 literacy endorsement list, yes. Not all the trainings from the dyslexia training designee met that criteria. So if it's on both lists, you're good to go. All you need to do is take the assessment, which the state is going to be paying for the educators um, to take it once. So you won't have to pay for it if you can pass it the first time. Um. I think we've gotten all the questions. I think so too. It says somebody is asking about letters. 
the letters program, if that training qualifies for both or all the so, Yes, letters does. Okay. It's, here it is. Um, and we are, the state is um, working with letters and we're offering cohorts to certain districts. Um, so that should help also. And I think I put this list in the chat. Is there anything else? Let's see. I, I think hope I didn't miss think. anything. I think you got everything, Maggie. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you so much, everybody. We really appreciate you coming here tonight and just you're obviously dedicated to this cause and supporting our dyslexic students out there. Remember, it's one in five kiddos. So thank you again for coming, Maggie. It was our honor and privilege to share the space with you today. Um, we appreciate the time that you gave us and to share your knowledge. So thank you so much. Thank you we for having me. <laughs> Have our a good night, pleasure. everyone. Okay, bye everybody.